Welcome to Kansas Ag Report with your host, Brian Hallman. Welcome to Kansas Ag Report. I'm Brian Hallman, and here's our lineup for today's show. In Ag News, we'll take a look at local and national headlines affecting Kansas farmers. In our Ag feature, we talk with Representative Ken Rogers about the final session's goals. And inside Kansas Ag, KDA reminds us about today's 28th annual Kansas Sampler Festival, and Kansas Wheat discusses best management practices. And in news you need to know, you get our weekly update from the Kansas Livestock Association, look back at last week's market activity with the guys from Paragon, and we'll let you know about important events coming up around the state of Kansas. Glad you could join us. Closed captioning brought to you by The Soybean Checkoff. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. KansasSoybeans.org. Ag Risk Solutions. Experience, knowledge, integrity. Your crop insurance solution, Ag Risk Solutions. Kansas Weed Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online at kswheat.com. Kansas Livestock Association, supporting our members' business interests to meet consumers' demands. KLA.org. Here's our national headlines for this week in Ag News. The National Biodiesel Board applauded the introduction of a bipartisan bio diesel tax credit bill that would convert the blender's credit for biodiesel to a dollar per gallon production credit for fuel producers in the U.S. for three years. The bill provides an additional 10 cents per gallon credit for small U.S. biodiesel producers. NBB is the U.S. Trade Association representing the entire biodiesel value chain, including producers, feedstock suppliers, and fuel distributors, as well as the U.S. renewable diesel industry. The USDA says cash receipts for milk marketing in 2016 were $34.5 billion, down 3.3% from 2015, while marketings were up 1.8% at 211 billion pounds. Milk averaged $16.34 per hundredweight, down 5% on the year. Total production was up 1.8% at 212 billion. The per cow average jumped 378 pounds to 22,774, and the U.S. herd was 14,000 head bigger at 9.3 million head. Starting May 22nd, the USDA's NAS will contact farmers and ranchers across the nation to conduct the Agricultural Resource Management Survey screener. This short and important survey will identify a small but representative sample of farmers in order to better understand the current financial state of U.S. agriculture. NAS plans to reach out to over 100,000 producers nationwide. And in local news, Casey's General Store announced it will expand consumer choice by offering higher ethanol blends of E15 and E85 at 17 sites in Illinois, Iowa, and Kansas. E15 is a fuel that contains 15% ethanol and works well for any car 2001 and newer. E85 contains up to 83% ethanol and is a choice for flex fuel vehicle owners. The locations of the three new Casey's General Stores that will offer higher ethanol blends in Kansas are located in Topeka, Seneca, and Smith Center. A Kansas State University Center is offering training to help local and state emergency responders prepare for something they hope never happens, a serious animal disease outbreak. The National Agricultural Biosecurity Center is offering two sessions in Kansas in May. The training will be offered in Manhattan on May 9th and in Ottawa on May 11th. Registration is available at k state.edu forward slash NABC. Each one-day session is an awareness level course designed to cover many aspects of foreign animal disease response. The Kansas Department of Agriculture Pesticide and Fertilizer Program recently received a grant from KDHE's Bureau of Air to aid in the disposal of orphan pesticide products. The EPA Pesticide West grant applies to waste from farmers, ranchers, retailers, businesses, and other private individuals. To apply, contact the KDA Pesticide and Fertilizer Program at 785-564-6688. Up next in our Ag Feature, we talk with Representative Ken Rogers about the final session's goals. You're watching Kansas Ag Report. Please stay tuned. This segment brought to you by... 
Kansas Livestock Association, supporting our members' business interests to meet consumers' demands. KLA.org. Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil-specific seed. Find them on the web at oldieseed.com. That's O-H-L-D-E seed.com. Grass and grain, online or in the mail. Keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com. Kansas Weed Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online at kswheat.com. Imagine having someone help you pick the best corn hybrids for every field on your farm. Your Oldie representative can combine your data with his data to offer a field-by-field prescription. Contact Oldie Seed today at 877-692-4555. This Medford, New Jersey school bus runs on biodiesel, and so do these. In fact, all of these buses run on clean-burning biodiesel, which is great because the more we use biodiesel in our heavy-duty vehicles, the less carbon pollution in our air. Think how great it would be if more of our school buses ran on biodiesel. More biodiesel, less carbon pollution. More is less. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. You need a partner that you can count on to be there for your business. Providing a depth of understanding to risk management issues so you don't have to. A knowledgeable support team located in your area, delivering products and services to make you more successful. The producer-funded Kansas Wheat Innovation Center was built to get improved varieties into the hands of farmers faster. Kansas Wheat, farmers advancing their future through wheat genetics research. Thanks for staying with us this morning. We're joined by Ken Rogers, who is our state uh, legislator and gives us our legislative updates. Uh, uh, Ken, by the time this airs, you'll be going back to uh, work uh, on Monday, basically, and uh, still have a lot of things in front of you, uh, budget, taxes, school finance. Yeah, we had a three-week break uh, to um, come back kind of to our home districts, to talk with our constituents, talk to them kind of what they're feeling, mm-hmm. also for us to get boots on the ground, uh, to see how things are and so really we've got a number of big issues. We've done a lot already this year but uh, obviously uh, a school finance formula has to be taken care of. Uh, we, we put that in there with, with taxes, uh, tax plan and in the budget and so anything else that might be left over but primarily those are, those will be the, the, the biggest things we have. Well let's jump in, uh, let's just jump in both feet. Uh, taxes being one of the biggest issues here in the state of Kansas. Uh, I know, I believe it was the House passed a tax increase, small tax increase, uh, didn't have enough votes to carry the veto from the governor where we stand with that. All right, so what's happened since the first tax uh, uh, bill, uh, the House did pass out a, a, a three-tiered uh, income tax plan that really didn't go anywhere. The, 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 the Senate uh, didn't, didn't pass it out. Uh, or I guess they did, and, and, and the, the governor vetoed it, so we kind of started all over again. Uh, since that time, uh, the House has passed out a flat tax proposal, has not had a vote yet, mm-hmm. but the Senate did, uh, working with the governor, it was a 4.6% flat tax. Uh, it was soundly defeated, 3 to 37, and so really in the process of, of determining, is that the best way to go? The governor has come out and said maybe the flat tax would be the best way to go. So it looks like, Brian, as we come to some sort of a, a kind of new tax plan, uh, the, the, the LLC situation, the pass-through income tax, those type of provisions will go away. If I was to guess, I would say that something in agreement will, will probably go back to that two to three tiered uh, tax plan. Uh, I would like to see something if we, if we do have to do that uh, to put some sunsets in it to, to have us continually work on it. One thing we want to make sure is we are seeing some positive signs in the Kansas economy, maybe not as quickly as many of us would like to see, but we want to make sure when this engine does take off that we don't create excess revenue 
because that's not right. right. That, that should stay with the Kansas people, but also that we don't create extra programs so when the economy does slag again, all of a sudden we're scrambling, and, and that's, that's not good fiscal policy. We're not only scrambling, but we've got no additional money to fill in any gaps besides taking out of transportation wheat. And as farmers, we know how important transportation is to the state of Kansas. So we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about uh, the budget and education. You're watching Kansas Ag Report, and we'll see you in just a minute. This segment brought to you by Farm Bureau, a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farmers and ranchers since 1919. KFB.org. Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil-specific seed, Find them on the web at oldeseed.com. That's O-H-L-D-E seed.com. Grass and grain, online or in the mail. Keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com. Kansas Weed Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online at kswheat.com. Thanks for staying with us. We're joined by Ken Rogers, our state legislator, and uh, we're getting our uh, our last update before we go into the final push in the session and trying to get a budget done, school finance. And let's talk about school finance. We kind of talked about taxes and budget in the first segment. The school finance, it is something that it touches everybody in the state of Kansas. It does, and uh, we're just uh, finishing up the block grant for the last couple of years. Supreme Court basically said that's unconstitutional, so we have to come up with a school uh, finance formula that works. Uh, it's been a lot of discussion most of the session. Where we are right now, the, the plan that's out there looks a little similar to the old formula, and uh, they're still doing some tweaks right now to try to do their best to hold each school district harmless. Uh, the words like consolidation, closing, those, those aren't in there. And, and not to say that uh, as we move forward, you know, we're all realizing that regardless of whether you're in the smallest school district or the largest, every Kansas kid deserves a good education to prepare them. And that's one of the things that we're, we're working towards is to make sure there's accountability. And one thing that I am concerned about uh, that we've talked about a little bit, but we haven't given enough creed and enough is, is vocational education funding. That's our FFA programs, our vocational agriculture, our trades. We talked of a good game, but we're not quite there funding it. And so I think that's vitally important to the sustainability of our rural schools and of a, of a strong Kansas workforce. And so those are the things I'm going to be fighting for. And so as we look, there's, there's a lot of numbers, and we could talk about them, Brian, but, but it's, it's, it's going to be a lot of free-flowing, and there's going to be a little more give and take. But I think eventually we want to make sure, we as legislators want to make sure that every Kansas student that wants to go on and be a productive member of society, whether it be working, going to a vocational school, or going to K-State, Fort Hayes, uh, private school, whatever, they're given the tools necessary so that when they're ready to hit the ground running or our community colleges, they're ready to go. We're not doing remedial. We're not doing things. And so they're given the tools they need in our high schools. Well, not only that, I think you bring up a good point, Ken, is, is not everybody's a doctor or not everybody's a lawyer. Uh, you drive in many rural communities throughout the state of Kansas like I do and you do as well. Uh, you see mechanics or whatever it might be, sh uh, machine operators. I mean, right. there's a need for skilled labor in this state. I think for, for at one time we thought the, 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 the way for all our students was to go to a four-year school and get that bachelor's degree. Uh, we have found that that's good for some, mm -hmm. but also there are some that are good for that one or two year to have the certificate. Uh, because we, we do need laborers, we do need those mechanics, we do need those heating and air conditioning folks, we do need the folks that do the basics for our neighbors and our friends, even for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to be another passion I'm going to continue to work on to make sure that uh, that those programs are being taken care of, those are funded, and that the students know that is an opportunity for them. Perfect. Well, at the end of the session, we'll get together with Ken and we'll kind of talk about some of the things you think you guys are going to go along, you think it will be done on time. Well, sounds like we'll be at least through the whole week, probably when this program airs next week, we'll probably still be in Topeka. We're hoping that we're not there. We could be there as long as the month of, of May if we need to be. We are, last year we were a little short. This year we're scheduled to go up to 100 days, which would, would theoretically put us uh, around Mother's Day, so another week or two. 
Possibly, we don't know. I mean, it just you know, I guess pray for success. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So at the end of the session, we'll get together with Ken. We'll talk about where we're at budget, taxes, and education. George and Kansas Ag Report. We'll see you in just a minute. If you would like to advertise your business on Kansas Ag Report, give us a call 785-580-3287. Kansas is full of amazing products and experiences, and one of the best places to learn about all of them is the Kansas Sampler Festival. I'm Lexi Wright, and I work with the From the Land of Kansas program at the Kansas Department of Agriculture. From the Land of Kansas works to help businesses promote their Kansas products. This spring, several of our members will be featured at the 28th Annual Kansas Sampler Festival at Island Park in Winfield on May 6th and 7th. From the land of Kansas, we'll have our own tent at the festival for visitors to sample and purchase products from great Kansas companies, including Hildebrand Farms Dairy from Junction City, Jams by Judy from Russell, Prairie Harvest from Newton, Beaver Creek Farm from Dexter, Flint Hills Aromatherapy from Atlanta, Hoganville Family Farms from Olathe, and Wright Farm Sunflower Oil from Bird City. In addition, Fisher Rocks from Belleville and K&R Enterprise from Cheney will ha each have their own display just outside the From the Land of Kansas tent. The Kansas Department of Agriculture is proud of these Kansas businesses and we are excited to support the economic growth these companies contribute to the Kansas agriculture industry. The festival is a wonderful opportunity to sample everything there is to see, do, buy, taste, hear, and learn in the state of Kansas. For more information or to view a list of exhibitors, visit www.kansassamplerfestival.com. If you love experiencing everything Kansas has to offer, you'll love the Kansas Sampler Festival and the From the Land of Kansas products you'll find there. Researchers at Kansas State University are coming together to help farmers get a bigger bang for their buck by finding management practices that can increase yields while still preserving the land. Romulo Loyato, Wheat and Forages Production Agronomist with K-State Research and Extension, says after performing long-term research of the yield potential in the region, we have found that we have a yield gap that can be reduced through management. This yield gap being the difference between what we produce now compared to what we could potentially produce. Loyato and his team have previously performed related research that shows the possibility for yields in central Kansas to increase about 10 to 20 percent while still maintaining profitability and stewardship of the land. The next step of the research is to determine exactly which management practices should be improved to accomplish that. In addition, the research shows that there's approximately a 30 to 35 bushel per acre yield gap between current yields and the yield potential, largely due to substandard wheat management practices. Loyato says we have a very low input control, which is representing our average farmer. And then on the other extreme of things, we have a very high input crop where we have several improved management practices. By using this approach, Loyato and his team will be able to differentiate wheat yields resulting from intensive management practices as opposed to those from standard management. This segment brought to you by Farm Bureau, a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farmers and ranchers since 1919. KFB.org. Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil-specific seed. Find them on the web at oldieseed.com. That's O-H-L-D-E seed.com. Grass and grain, online or in the mail. Keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com. Kansas Weed Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online at kswheat.com. Premier Farm and Home has what you need to make your lawn the best in the neighborhood. Hi, I'm Ken. We choose Premier Farm and Home for the professional look that we do ourselves. Feel free to stop in. You can also visit our website at heycow.com. I will take action against herbicide resistant weeds. I will know my weeds and I will stop them before they go to seed. I will do whatever it takes to give my crops the upper hand and I will use multiple herbicide sites of action because every action counts. I will take action this time for all time. 
You need a partner that you can count on to be there for your business. Providing a depth of understanding to risk management issues so you don't have to. A knowledgeable support team located in your area, delivering products and services to make you more successful. The producer-funded Kansas Wheat Innovation Center was built to get improved varieties into the hands of farmers faster. Kansas Wheat, farmers advancing their future through wheat genetics research. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. This Medford, New Jersey school bus runs on biodiesel, and so do these. In fact, all of these buses run on clean-burning biodiesel, which is great because the more we use biodiesel in our heavy-duty vehicles, the less carbon pollution in our air. Think how great it would be if more of our school buses ran on biodiesel. More biodiesel, less carbon pollution. More is less. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Imagine having someone help you pick the best corn hybrids for every field on your farm. Your Oldie representative can combine your data with his data to offer a field-by-field -field prescription. Contact Oldie Seed today at 877-692-4550. Nearly 500 producers were certified through six beef quality assurance training sessions held in January, February, and March of this year by the Kansas Beef Council. Workshops were held in several locations across the state, including Russell, Payola, Dodge City, Clay Center, and Atwood, with an online webinar geared toward high school agriculture and FFA students. Ranchers, feeders, dairymen, and veterinarians attending the checkoff-funded sessions learned more about animal husbandry, downed animal care, humane euthanasia, and low-stress cattle handling techniques. Anyone interested in becoming certified in beef quality assurance can take advantage of free online training sponsored by Beringer Ingelheim Vet Medica. The online modules are customized to meet the needs of cow-calf, stalker, feed yard, and dairy producers. To become certified, go to www.bqa.org. Many who have gone through the training and implemented BQA practices report increased efficiency and profitability. Certification also reassures consumers as beef quality assurance guidelines are designed to make certain all those who eat beef can take pride in what they purchase and can trust and have confidence in the entire beef industry. Good morning. I'm Derek Hermish with Paragon Ag. Rumor has it there's a lot of old crop corn in on-farm storage. The last monthly USDA report had 2017 corn ending stocks pegged to be 2.32 billion bushel. While that is a lot of corn, the stocks to use ratio is expected to be right around 15.9%. For clarity's sake, our stocks to use ratio floated between 8 and 10% from 2010 to 2013. Those years were accompanied by higher prices than where we sit currently. Before 2010, things fluctuated between 10 and 20% ending stocks to use ratio with a couple of outliers until you get to the 1980s where it was common to have a stocks to use ratio much higher than 20%. The point of those numbers is that while 2.32 billion bushels is a huge number, it is not as big as a pile to chew through as what it once was. However, it is still a comfortable enough number for end users to keep them from being aggressive buyers without a perceived weather threat. It is the same old song and dance re in regards to weather, just the numbers have changed. Maybe a bigger question looming, is the U.S. farmer solvent enough to carry over 2.32 billion bushels of corn in the next year? Some of them are certainly, but we are several years removed from $7 corn. Input prices have come down, but not enough to combat $3 corn without an above average harvest. Hopefully a bountiful soybean harvest from the past year combined with profitable prices is enough to prevent a rush for the exit door on old crop corn later this summer. But a guy probably ought to check into his personal solvency 
before testing those waters. I'm Derek Hermish. Have a good day. Closed captioning brought to you by The Soybean Checkoff. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. KansasSoybeans.org. Ag Risk Solutions. Experience, knowledge, integrity. Your crop insurance solution, Ag Risk Solutions. Kansas Weed Commission. Leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online at kswheat.com. Kansas Livestock Association, supporting our members' business interests to meet consumers' demands. KLA.org. Well, that's our show for today. I hope you'll join us each week for more news and information about agriculture in the state of Kansas. I'm Brian Holman, and thanks for watching. I will take action against herbicide-resistant weeds. I will know my weeds, and I will stop them before they go to seed. I will do whatever it takes to give my crops the upper hand, and I will use multiple herbicide sites of action because every action counts. I will take action, this time, for all time. You need a partner that you can count on to be there for your business. Providing a depth of understanding to risk management issues so you don't have to. A knowledgeable support team located in your area, delivering products and services to make you more successful. Premier Farm and Home has what you need to make your lawn the best in the neighborhood. Hi, I'm Ken. We choose Premier Farm and Home for the professional look that we do ourselves. Feel free to stop in. You can also visit our website at heycow.com.